Broadcasting Company presents Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Diamond, this is Walt. Where the devil are you? Where I started out to be, down on River Street, looking for well, the you guy... you stay right there and wait for me, but you might as well stop looking. Why stop looking? Take my word for it, he's not there. Well, if you're so smart, where is he? The city morgue. We fished him out of the river ten minutes ago. <laughs> Here's another exciting case from the files of Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Diamond Detective Agency, first over the bars. That's nice. Oh, hello, Helen, baby. Busy? No, why? I'm lonesome. Can't you come over? Honey, I'd love to, but you can never tell when... So uh, Mr. Diamond. Oh, see what I mean? Oh, a customer. Well, oh, let's see. What can I do for you? Uh, I want to hire you. Helen, the man wants to hire me. Oh, good. I'll call you back. Bye. Bye. Now, uh, Mr. Uh, uh... Uh, Wellington, Mr. Diamond. Mm. Casper Wellington. Oh, well, pull up a couch and tell me the details, Mr. Wellington. I need a bodyguard, Mr. Diamond. Why? Oh, y- y- it's not for myself. It's for Timothy. Well, why does Timothy need a bodyguard? Someone's trying to kill him. Oh, you've been to the police? Oh, yes, yes, but they feel it's not quite important enough for them. You mean this Timothy's life is in danger and the police won't handle it? Yes. Isn't it ridiculous? I don't know. Has anybody tried to kill Timothy before? Well, no one has exactly tried to kill him, but I very definitely expect an attempt. Hmm. Right, now look, uh, this uh, Timothy, is he a friend of yours? Oh, yes, a very good friend. So what makes you think that someone is going to try to kill him? Mr. Diamond, I came here to hire you to protect Timothy. I'm perfectly willing to pay you your fee, but for the moment, the rest of your questions must go unanswered. Well, uh, my fee's $100 a day in expenses, Mr. Wellington. Still perfectly willing to pay it? Here's the cash. Mm-hmm. And there'll be another 100 if you protect Timothy long enough for me to get him on a train tomorrow. Where's he going? Out of town, where he can be safe. What's Timothy's last name? That will also have to go unanswered. Oh, well, now, wait a minute. Supposing I do take the job, where do I meet this Timothy? How will I know him? If you take the job, he'll be in your office in a matter of minutes. Well, something sure doesn't ring up right, but the 200 fish and expenses, I'd play footsies with a cobra. Good. Now, I'm going down to the train station to pick up Timothy's ticket. When he arrives, I expect you to remain with him constantly. Until tomorrow? Oh, I got a small apartment. I hate the bundle. Don't let him out of your sight for a moment. I want him alive and well when he gets on that train in the morning. Does he play Pachisi? Well, I doubt it, but you never can tell. He might like it. Hmm, dandy. Have him at Grand Central at 8 o'clock. I'll meet you. Do you know of any way I could possibly learn to hate money? If I did, I would never have come to you. Uh, good day, Mr. Diamond. Oh. Hmm. Atlantic Bone and Fertilizer. Oh, that's a pit. Just wondering how a new business would work out? Now, what's wrong? Uh, I have a very unhealthy feeling that I've just let myself in for something I won't like. Oh, the client? Well, kind of. I've got a guard, a friend of his. What's the matter with that? Oh, I'm not going all through that again. The client just came on like secret service. I got the name of the guy he wants guarded, and I know that someone's going to try and kill him. And that's it. Rick, you be careful. Honey, honey, the client shoved 200 bucks in my rural hot hand. Oh, good. What do you want me to do? I'm trying for capitalists this year. Didn't your client go to the police first? Sure. He went to the police with the... Hey, you. Me? What? Yeah, you. Rick, are you listening? Yeah, I'm listening. Put down the phone, friend. We want to talk to you. Well, if you're listening, why don't you answer my question? If your client went to the police... That's better. Well, now, I'm a sport, especially when someone's got a gun pointed at me. Oh, the gun ain't gonna hurt you, chum, if you answer a couple of questions. Where's Casper Wellington? Who? You're gonna be difficult? Look, you got a gun on me. Who wants to be difficult? You don't know Casper Wellington, friend? Uh, never heard of him. 
We seen him come into the building. Oh, so you figured he came to see me. It's such a small building, only about a hundred offices. Oh, that's pretty funny. Glad you liked it. No, but we didn't. You're the only private detective in the building. We figured maybe Casper wanted to hire you. What would he want to hire me for? What did this guy do? How do you like that, George? Now he's a nosy comic. Mm. Well, Durante gets away with it. Friend, I have just decided your humor bores me. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty bad, ain't it, Tony? Suppose we push his face around, huh? Maybe he don't feel like no more Joe. Oh, now, wait a minute. I don't know anything about this Casper or whatever his name is. What good is it going to do to work me over? Well, now, you see, Tony and me got real nasty dispositions. We've been crossed, and then you make with the jokes. We don't like being the only ones unhappy, so we think maybe you ought to join. Now, look. Uh, hold it a second, George. What for? It's a setup. Oh, wait. We mess him up, the law comes. We got to find cash, but we ain't got no time to play patty cake with the cops. Uh, just one across the mouth. Forget it. Look, friend, you sure Casper Wellington didn't come in here? I couldn't be more positive. Okay. Put down the rod, George. Uh, that don't look so unhappy. Maybe the shamus is lying. We catch him telling a fib. Just think of the fun you can have later on, huh? Come on. We'll leave him? Yeah. So long, friend. And uh, for your sake, I hope you've been leveling. Yeah. See you around. Yeah, bye. Hmm. This is fool's fancy shop for you, Paula. Now, you listen to me, Richard Diamond. The next time you hang up on me, but I'll how... never speak to you again. But, uh, you but... better have a pretty good excuse for doing it this time. But, uh... You know I take a lot of things from you, Rick, but never, never once have you hung up on me. Helen, please. And I think it was rude and inconsiderate. Helen. And I want to know right now, this minute, just what kind of a poor, lame brain excuse you're going to come up with. Helen! Well? No... Look, baby, I don't know what's going on. This is like doing business in a roundhouse. The only reason I hung up on you was because two guys stole in here and shoved guns in my face. Rick! And they were looking for the guy who came in earlier and hired me to look after someone named Timothy that I haven't even seen yet. It sounds awfully confusing. It is. Oh, hold the phone. Here's somebody else. Come in with your hands up. You Richard Diamond? Yep. You got a crate here addressed to you. Oh, well, that figures. Bring it in. Helen. Yes? You sent me maybe a present? No. You want me to? Yeah, but someone's beaten you to it. Where do you want it? Good grief. Put it down right there. What's the matter? The present. The <laughs> biggest crate you ever saw. A crate? What's in it? How do I know? Well, open it. Okay, Mr. Diamond. Stand right here. Yeah. There you are. I hope you still be very happy. Helen. Yes? Hold the phone. I'm going to open this thing. All right. Oh, no. Oh, get away. Get away. Now, get on. Get on. Don't come up here. Don't, don't, don't. Oh, Helen. Rick, what in the world's the matter? Helen, if this is your idea of a joke... And tell me what's wrong. What well, can't you hear it? Well, I heard something, but I thought you must have eaten your lunch too fast. Well, I'm standing on my desk trying to fight off a monster. What? Call up Charles Adams right away. A monster? Yes. I'd swear it was a seal, but I know my friends better than that. This thing has got to be poisonous. A seal? Yes, a seal. Hey, he's not so bad. He's applauding. <laughs> You must have liked that remark about Adams. Now you stop it. Do you expect me to believe all this? Uh, she doubts you, fella. Say a few words. Rick, who in the world would send you a seal? I don't even need the look. This has got to be Timothy. Oh, it is Timothy. When he heard his name, he made like a curtain call. Sounds like one Richard Diamond. Hey, that's pretty... nothing. I'll call you back. Where are you going? I'm going to take Timothy right back to Mr. Casper Wellington and tell him that... Yes? Oh, for the love of... I don't know where to find Mr. Casper Wellington. Well, there it was. It was pretty silly. The smart, shrewd, level-headed Richard Diamond, for the sake of a couple of hundred fast bucks, winds up playing nursemaid and companion to a honking seal. Just to make sure it was, Timothy, I took a look at the crate, and there on top was a small printed card. It read, This is Timothy. If you want him to do something, throw him a fish. 
Herring. Signed, Casper Wellington. Well, that tore it. My temper was already pushing my hair up to attention, so I went out to the nearest delicatessen and came back with a bag of fish. With this, I lured Timothy out of the building and down on the street. I had to find Casper Wellington, so 60 pedestrians and one unhappy cabbie later, Timothy and I stole casually into the 5th Precinct Police Station. Oh, well, hello, Sergeant Otis. Oh, oh how are you, Shamus? Huh? How oh, what? What'd you just say? I said, hello, Sergeant Otis. No, after that. Yeah, 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 that was it. Something wrong, Sergeant? Otis, Otis, say hello to Timothy. Timothy, this is Sergeant Otis. Lieutenant, Lieutenant! Go on over and kiss the Sergeant Timothy. Go on. Oh, no, 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 get him away from me. Get him away. Oh, Otis, he's not so bad. Lieutenant! Now, Otis, come down off that desk. You look sillier than I did. Oh, oh, be quiet. You too, Timothy. You'll wake up the lieutenant. Here's a fish. Throw it to Timothy. Uh, Enough for you, Diamond. You'll probably take my arm along with it. Get get away. Get away. What the devil is going on out here? Otis, what are you doing up there? Hello, Walt. What are you doing to my sergeant? And you shut up, Otis. That wasn't me. What do you mean it wasn't you? Of course it was you. Walt, meet Timothy. How do you... Ah! I'd hate to think what would happen if someone wandered in here with a walrus. Come on, Timothy. Let's go see the brave old head of homicide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get him out of here. Oh, relax, Otis. Timothy's as scared as you are. Oh, yeah? What makes you say that? He's probably thinking there's more like you. That would be a horrible shock to anyone, even a seal. Oh. Come on, Timothy. Hey, you get that thing out of here right now, Diamond. Everybody's standing on something. You'd think it was a steam bath. Up till now, I've had two reported homicides and a couple of fat robberies. And if you think you're going to wander in here with that thing and confuse the whole department, you're mistaken. Now get it out of here. Oh, Walt, it's only a seal. Have a fish. I'm not hungry. No, no, Walt. It's for Timothy. Feed it to him. He'll, he'll love you. Yeah? Do you think so? Sure, sure, Walt. Go ahead. Try it. Okay. Here, Timothy. He's applauding. Sure, he's a nice little fella. Now, climb down and help me. Uh, give me another fish. Oh, won't come down without it, huh? Okay, Walt, speak. Oh, don't be ridiculous. I want to feed it to Timothy. He likes me. <coughs> See? Oh, lovely. Why don't you two get engaged? Oh. La, 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 la. <laughs> Well, after everybody got used to him, Timothy made the rounds of the whole department with the commissioner being the only exception, of course. I told Walt the story about Casper Wellington and the two Garnets who had come into my office looking for him. So Walt put Otis to work checking on the whereabouts of my missing client. Along about three in the afternoon, Otis pounced in with some news. Uh, hey, Diamond. You find something? Oh, hi, Timothy. Yeah, uh... Say, I checked with the Humane Society, and they report some guy who lives down by the docks. The name's Wellington, all right. He's been turned in a couple of times because he raises seals, and they make a lot of noise. Oh, uh, and Lieutenant, we just got a report on another homicide. Well, thanks, Sporty. You tell the Lieutenant all about it, Otis. I'm going after Casper Wellington. What's the address? Uh, here it is. 918 River Street. Come on, Tim. Goodbye, Timothy. Otis. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. What was I saying? Homicide, remember? Just a little old homicide. I left Walt and Otis climbing over the furniture and headed for the address of Casper Wellington. Timothy and I grabbed the first cabbie who didn't believe what he was seeing, and 20 minutes later, we pulled up in front of a building on River Street. Thanks, cabbie. Yeah, sure. Thank the man, Timothy. Uh, mister? Yeah? I didn't ask you nothing when you got in the cab because I just didn't believe it. Is that a seal you got with you? You're expecting maybe a raccoon? Do you always take him around with you like that? Sure, we're brothers. Right by the house sometime for dinner when Mom isn't taking a swim. Hmm. She's not a very good driver, is he, Timothy? You know it. Come on, you're going home. Hold it right here, friend. Hmm? You hide him. This is a gun in your back. Oh. Yeah. Oh. You lied to me, friend. I'll go stand in the corner. Nah, don't move. Okay. 
George, grab the seal. Oh, yeah. now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You can't do that. What a bet. Come here, you. Take your hands off that seal. Shut your mouth. Mm. Fish. Next time you don't get it across the neck, I'll give you the rat on the skull. Okay, friend. I got him. All right, get him in a car. And you, stay put. One bad move, you're going to get shot up very bad. Come on, George. You got that thing in the car? Yeah, he's saying let's get out of here. All right, friend. Yeah. You uh, see this? I got pointed at you. I see. Good. Forget about today, you won't see it again. Open that big yap of yours and it goes boom. I'll turn around because when we leave, I don't want you looking back for no license number. <laughs> Well, I stood there while they drove off with poor little Timothy. Then I made a quick dash across the street into a store with a phone booth. Seconds later, I was hearing one of the most beautiful sounds in the world. Diamond, this is Walt. Where the devil are you? Where I started out to be, down on River Street, looking for my client. Well, you stay right there and wait for me, but you might as well stop looking. Well, why stop looking? His house is just down at the end of the block. Well, take my word for it, he isn't there. Well, if you're so smart, where is he? The city morgue. We fished him out of the river ten minutes ago. What? He was suffering from a hole in his chest. Dead before he was tossed in. Oh, Walt, Walt. Remember those two guys who came into my office earlier? Yeah. Well, they just put the snatch on Timothy and belted me across the neck for my trouble. They swiped the seal? Yeah, so get on here. I'll meet you at Casper Wellington's house. <laughs> Anybody in the house, Rick? No. Hmm. Well, no answer. Well, let's case the place. I've got a skeleton key. To Alt. To Alt. It's open, see? Now, if you'll notice as I walk in, at no time do my feet leave my legs. Very funny. Whew. Yeah, smells like somebody's been cooking up a fish stew. Crummy joint. Ooh, get a load of that kitchen. What a mess. Oh, uh, weren't cooking fish, Wall, just cleaning it. There's still a mess of them left on the sink. Well, Casper raised seals. Where are the rest of them? Wall. Yeah? Come here. What is it? Get a look at this backyard. Holy cow. Bunch of dead seals. Who in the world would do anything like that? Maybe your two friends. Hey, what's this? Oh, what's what? This bag on the floor, leather bag. What's in it? Nothing. Wait a minute. Some kind of dust at the bottom. Well, save it. We'll have it analyzed when we get down to the station. We've got to check up on those two guys who kidnapped Timothy. This is the craziest case. I got a hunch. Sure, it's crazy, but if I'm right, it's also pretty smart. Let's go to the station. Uh, hey, Lieutenant. Yeah, Otis? Uh, we just got something else on that Casper Wellington guy. Oh? What did he steal? Hey, how'd you know? Just a guess. Well, what is it, Hammerhead? Well, uh, it uh, seems this Wellington guy works at, uh, I mean, used to work for David and Sons. David and Sons? Uh, diamond importers. Oh, that ties it. Would somebody mind telling me what the devil this is all about? And Rick, you stay out of it. Now, Otis, what about Wellington? Wellington? Oh, he ran off with a load of diamonds. Yeah, 50,000 bucks worth. Hey, but you don't... Rick, will you please, for the sake of my sour stomach, tell me exactly what it is you know? I'd be glad to, Lieutenant. It's very simple. Wellington comes to me and asks me to guard Timothy. Two guys kidnap Timothy. That we heard. Then we find a bunch of dead seals in Wellington's backyard and the remains of a pile of clean fish. So? So, the two guys who kidnapped Timothy were obviously after something, and the seal was part of it. Hey, maybe Timothy wasn't a seal after all. Now, what would he be, Otis? Well, if those guys wanted him that bad... Maybe he was a mink. Oh. oh, that bag you picked up, Walt. Have that powder in the bottom analyzed. I'll lay six to an even that it's diamond dust. Well, you think... Yeah, yeah. I think Timothy's got a stomach full of diamonds. What? I think Casper was mixed up with the two guys who grabbed the seal, but in some way crossed them. Why? But... He had to hide the loot, so he stuck it in some fish and fed it to Timothy. Then he left Timothy with me for protection until he could get him shipped out on the train. And in the meantime, the two guys who found Casper killed him and went back to his house to find the loot. Mm -hmm. They figured out the fish like you did and killed the seals in the backyard trying to find the stuff. You, my friend, went a herring. Otis, have the yes. powder in the bottom of this bag analyzed. Put out a 108 on Timothy. Yes, sir. Diamond here will give you the description of the guys who grabbed him. Mm -hmm. We'll never find him that way. Uh, you got a better idea? Maybe, yeah. Uh, look, you said those two guys killed Casper and then went right over to the house to look for the missing diamonds. Yes. All right, they knew where to look, but they didn't find anything. So they waited for me and Timothy. So? So Casper Wellington probably told them all about it before they killed him, trying to save his own life. All right, I'll buy that. So what? So by now, they must know how hot those diamonds are. 
They're certainly not going to try to get rid of them here in town. And then they leave town. Yeah. And with that much loot, it would be a little risky if they tried by car. All right, all right. How do they do it? The same way Casper thought of. Ship Timothy out on a train. Wait a minute, Rick. Otis. Yeah? Put in a call to all units. Tell them to cover the airports, train, and bus stations. Be on the lookout for a sea that's about to be shipped. Come on, Walt. Where to? Well, as long as Casper Wellington already made the arrangements by train, let's go down to Grand Central. Maybe our two seal nappers will keep the reservation. Walt and I piled in the squad car again, and 20 minutes later, we were standing in the middle of Grand Central Station with a bag of fish and a weather eye out for the missing seal and his two abductors. Now, where do we start? Well, Walt, why don't you just go ask information? Just say, I'm looking for two men and a seal. The seal is hiding $50,000 worth of diamonds. Now, you stop that. This was plenty silly before a jewel robbery and a homicide get into the picture, but now it's gotten ridiculous. Well, if I was a seal, where would I go? They have to crate him, the shipping department. And so, with their trusty bag of fish, the two brave detectives oh, walked non shut up and let's go. Oh, no, come on, let's go get something to eat. Well, smile, Walt. This kind of case doesn't happen but once every 10,000 years. Think of your report to the commissioner. If you don't stop kidding with me, so help me hey, out. Hey, Walt. Oh, now what? Look, those two guys. Where? Going down the ramp. Oh, they got a big box. That's it. Let's take them. Well, you said they got guns. They were pointing things at shot bullets. Could be guns. Take it easy. They're going up to that counter. Yeah. Hold it. Hold it here. No sense in starting a shooting match. Too many people. Well, what'll we do? Maybe the seal's not in the box. And if I pick them up without the loot, we may never find it. I got an idea. Go ahead, genius. Timothy likes fish, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, fish. take this bag. They know me, so you walk down there and move in close to the box. Timothy's bound to get a whiff, and if I know Timothy, he'll raise a few flippers. You want me to... You want to get those diamonds, don't you? Oh, give me the bag. Don't snap. People will just think you ran out of cologne. I'll get going. Yeah. Uh, pardon me, but I'd like to find out about sending something. Oh, yeah? Well, what's the idea, Buster? We was here first. Shut up, stupid. You boys must be really sending something big. You do know, I told you to shut up. Yeah, yeah, some, uh, some furs. Oh, live ones? Hey, Tiny, what's with the seal? Will you shut up? What? I hate to mention it, but your furs are throwing a fit. Okay, boys, that's all I wanted to know. Let's take a seal. He's gone after a sack. This guy lays down. It's a sack full of fish. Hey, what's the idea? The law, stay right there. Hey, Rick. Cops, were you... All right, bud, drop it. Huh? I said drop it. Okay, okay, you ain't taking me. Look out, Rick, this guy's got a gun. Ah, ah, let go. Let go of my hand. Will you get the seal off? He's chewing my hand off. And drop the gun. All right, all right, get him off. Come on, get him off. <laughs> ah. How do you like that? Oh. Timothy grabbed this gun up by the gun hand and made him drop it. I'll be uh, done. Crazy seal nearly kill me. You and your bright idea. Ship the seal, you ship. Ah, okay, you boys, here's a bracelet for you. Let's go outside. Uh, Walt, Walt, wait a minute. We got to get the jewels. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, I'll take care of these two guys, and then I'll take Timothy to a good veterinary. Okay. Uh, uh, Walt. Yeah? If it means surgery, keep in touch. Sure. Bye, Timothy. Don't be unhappy. Oh, how can I help it, honey? I, he's been in surgery for nearly an hour. Oh, but he'll be all right. They got a good vet. Oh, I hope so. I was getting attached to that seal. Oh, I got it. Yeah? Rick? Yeah, Walt. Yeah. How's Timothy? He had the diamonds in him, all right. Oh, but how is he? Well... Uh, go ahead, Walt. You can tell me. I, I, I can stand it. He's very weak. Doctor says he thinks he doesn't want to live. No will. Oh, what's the matter? He was such a happy seal. I think he misses you, Rick. Every time someone mentions your name, he kind of honks and raises a weak flipper. I better come right down. He's sinking fast. Oh, you think maybe if he heard my voice... Uh, uh, can you get a phone near him? Yeah, yeah, wait a minute. Okay, I got it next to his ear. Say something. Hello, Timothy. <coughs> oh, Walt. Yeah? Walt, ask him if he's seen a picture called Mrs. Mike. He says he saw it. Didn't like the leading man. Oh. Loved Evelyn Keys. Oh. Ask him if he liked the music. Yeah, he liked that. Well, put the receiver next to his ear and I'll sing him the theme song. Well, go ahead and try. Anything in case of an emergency. Mm -hmm. 
If her name is Kathy, she's mine alone. When I walk with Kathy, proud am I. She's the girl I'll marry, and cross the threshold I'll carry. And I'll love but Kathy till I die. She's the only angel I've ever known. She's a maid no man is worthy of. Although girls are many, compared to her, there isn't any. Only Kathy. Walt? I did it. He's better? Listen. Good old Timothy, that a boy. I guess the singing did it. What do you mean you guess? When I sang with the Peter Pan Five, we played two weeks at the Carl Gables Hotel in Florida. So what? So what? I'll have you know five minutes after I opened my mouth, every seal in the Biscayne Keys came in and sat ringside. That sounds like a pretty good act. Well, what'd you give it up for? Well, I got a sore throat one night and the place was up to its ears in alligators. Rick. Yes, Wall? Bye. 